It's 8.50, a typical morning at Daytona Beach International Airport. Cabin crew, all doors to automatic and cross check. In five minutes, the unexpected will happen. Will emergency responders be ready? Jackson or Oceanic, uh, flight D15. Through flight level 180, explosive decompression, possible po uh, structural damage, request nearest airport. A plane carrying a high school cheerleading team from Augusta, Georgia to West Palm Beach, Florida is in trouble and needs to land immediately. Jack Center, uh, Oceanic Flight 81561, uh, souls on board. Oceanic 815, this is uh, Jack's uh, Center. Uh, I've got, uh, you just passed Jacksonville Airport. I can take you down to Daytona, which is just about uh, 20 miles ahead of you. And I've got Sanford Airport and Orlando International Airport. Which, which one of those would you like? The aircraft captain requests to make an emergency landing at Daytona Beach International Airport. Oceanic A15, I'm in heading now. Turn left, left turn, heading 090. Descend and maintain 1,600. Report Daytona Beach Airport in sight for runway 16. In three minutes, the firefighters' training will be tested. Aircraft Rescue Firefighter Units, also known as ARF, are standing by. Copy, standing by in our standby positions awaiting for further information. You have souls on board and amount of fuel. To uh, affirmative, there is 61 souls on board and 1,500 pounds of fuel. 1,500 pounds of, four, of fuel, 61, gallon, uh, 61 souls on board. Fire Ops Command, there are 61 souls on board and 1,500 pounds of fuel. But Oceana Flight 815 won't land without incident. Alert 3, Alert 3, the ATR-72 has crash-landed just short of the approach end of runway 16. ARF-2 and ops vehicles see directly to the crash site. 9.05, Oceana Flight 815 experiences a microburst and crash lands short of approach. The plane is on fire. Daytona Beach ground is ARF-2, we have permission to proceed to the crash site. No answer, but the firefighter can clearly see the plane going up in flames. Five seconds later, he asks again. After a second attempt to communicate with the airport tower and no answer, the firefighter proceeds toward the burning plane. From airport operations, it was it, communications always an issue. Uh, there were there was a lot of chatter on the radio. Clearly a breakdown in communications. Here's what you should do: establish the incident command system. This allows orders to flow down the chain of command and information to flow up the chain of command. It decreases the amount of freelancing and increases accountability for responders. Now on scene, ARF assesses the situation and prepares for direct attack and rescue. Fire ops to command, I'm on scene. I have a engine fire on the number two side. I also have people self-evacuating from the rear of the air aircraft. There appears to be smoke coming from the cockpit. ARF-2 is going to make an aggressive interior attack and try to make evacuations. ARF prepares to enter the plane. We noticed that two fire service firefighters attempted to, to uh, command, we believe, attempted to get into the uh, aircraft without proper bunker gear. And we noticed one of the law enforcement, Volusia County law enforcement representatives, appear to go into the aircraft without any type of protect, protective gear. Meanwhile, some passengers are quickly directed to a safe area. They appear to be okay. The walking wounded, they self-evacuated with the help of the flight attendant. She did her job perfectly, got them out of the hot zone away from the area. 906, all emergency and law enforcement units begin to arrive on scene. When I arrived on scene, the initial attack was underway by the ARF units. They had an interior line into the aircraft. People were self-evacuating. At 9.08, two firemen rush on board the plane. There are people here. In their haste, the firemen overlook two injured passengers. It will definitely be a learning process. We had a little breakdown in communication. Like I said, that's always a problem in a scenario in a real life situation also. But that's when you break down and you get out of your trucks and you go face to face with people. Uh, and, and get the information firsthand. The rescue is over, but firefighters are forced to go back inside the plane. We still have an engine fire on the number two side. Two minutes later. You can show this fire under control. It is not out, but it's under control. Lieutenant Whalen is not pleased. At the onset of the incident, I would have liked to have better communications, 
um, with the tower and the pilot. I was never able to confirm if the pilot had shut off his radar and his, and his fuel and his electronics. I wasn't able to confirm that and I, and I wanted to hit that. So that's a, that's a benchmark we blew. Here are the priorities for ARF tactics. Aggressively apply fire suppression agent directly on flames. Cover the fuel spill with a foam agent to keep it from igniting. Make entry into the fuselage with hose lines to assist with the direct attack and remove passengers from the hot zone. Away from the plane, wounded patients are given medical attention and triage, but there's confusion about the number of fatalities. 18 and 13, 31, 31, nope, 32, there's the black one in the front of the truck, it's a baby, 32, then we have everybody. There's also a problem with the patient count. Get the final numbers on the patient count. Yes, sir. We're going to need to reconfirm Eight. those numbers. Eight of them. Okay. This should add up to 61 total, which was the number on the aircraft. 32 black. All passengers were eventually accounted for. The uninjured and the walking wounded are now transported to triage. Here's what you need to know. Triage is the process of sorting injured people into groups based on their need for immediate medical treatment. It's used in hospital emergency rooms, on battlefields, and at disaster sites when limited medical resources must be allocated. Transport, removing victims from the emergency scene to the hospital, and total patient count. Get a head count of all the passengers. EVAC Field Supervisor Mike Poniatowski makes this observation. Well, I'm looking at the organization and the choreography about uh, triaging patients and getting them transported off the scene, and it's going very well, very smooth. Fire departments interface very well with EMS. Patients have been uh, taken out of the hot zone into the cold zone, and they have been uh, triaged. They're being treated and transported effectively to the area hospital, so it's working very well. Inside, the airport command center has begun initial activation. Calls are beginning to come in from West Palm Beach. If you are part of airport operations, here are several things you need to do. Assist incident command. Secure the hot zone. Make sure all airfields are closed. You should also oversee mitigation of crash site administration support for field operations, group information, collection, and dissemination. Also, you should oversee setup of walking wounded in reunification area. The aircraft fuselage has been cleared by fire services for any victims, any fatalities. They're all moved outside. EVAC is, is performing triage functions and they're getting ready to, fire services is getting ready to turn the incident over to law enforcement for uh, crime scene processing. 955, the accident scene is turned over to law enforcement. We've uh, transitioned from the response phase, the initial response phase, to the recovery phase. Uh, they're going to transfer command shortly over to the, uh, the Volusia County Sheriff's Office, which is going to take over the law enforcement role. Uh, treat this as a crime scene, do the investigation, and get the medical examiner out here to, uh, to remove the remains. From that point, once that's removed, um, the aircraft itself will be transferred to airport operations, and we'll um, have to wait on the NTSB to get here and do the investigation. Here are several takeaway points for law enforcement. Secure all gates. Assist incident command. Secure the emergency scene. Set up and assist with the investigation. Also assist with additional investigations if necessary. If this were a real crash, would you be ready? You can look at the mistakes the crews made and improve upon them. But the big takeaway here is what was done right and how all agencies work together to take control of this crash site get patients to safety, and maintain effective communication between all responding agencies during the course of the drill.